Hello and welcome to a very special review. I'm your host for this evening, Stephen McCullough, and tonight, for all you Hexbug and BattleBots fans out there, we have a real treat in store. We love the work Hexbug has been putting into its BattleBots toy line over the last few years, giving us some exceptionally detailed replicas of some of the most famous bots ever to grace the BattleBox floor. Their dedication to putting innovation first has resulted in some very impressive and highly technical toys, but if there is one drawback, it's that there are so many bots fans still want to see in toy form. And for my chaotic co-host Anthony, there is one Hexbug toy above all others that he would love to add to his collection. Scorpius. The machine brought to us by Zachary Little and Diana Tarlson has proven to be a firm fan favourite, but so far has received no merchandise love. So when the actual company can't keep up, it's up to the fans to do it ourselves. Step in champion customizer Chaotic Robotics to bring Scorpius to life. I have probably made many, many hundreds of Hexbug mods. I have been doing this for maybe three years, I think up until the start of 2021 was when I actually started getting pretty good at it. For example, here's a little tornado that I made from a Minotaur, a blip that I made from a blacksmith, and uh, an ice wave I made from a fight force. The list goes on, there's a lot of these. And because they're all RC, of course, I like to kind of toss them in the arena and do a few fights with my friends in our own little series on YouTube. So making these Scorpios was looking back on how I made Scorpios previously because this was not the first time I made it. I made one with a tombstone back at the start of 2021 I want to say. The second version which I based a lot of it off of for this one was completely cardboard and not 3D printed and I thought if I wanted to send it over it probably need to be completely 3D printed and a lot more durable which is what I did. Pretty much how I started was I just measured a lot of the dimensions from the cardboard templates that I had for the first version. From there, I was able to just in CAD make a new version of it and a new blade. And then once that was all printed out, it was a case of disassembling the old saw blades, removing all of the saw blades from it, and putting in a little bit of Scorpios. And that's pretty much the main gist of how I made it. And as it turns out, Zack and Diana were highly impressed with Chaotic Robotics' work, commissioning their own little machine for themselves. New toy! I didn't know how much I needed this in my life. I'm reliving my greatest victory, but in Hexbug form. So all that was left to do was present Anthony with his present. Alright Anthony, keep your eyes shut for this one. Keep it steady, keep it steady. Open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that no is way. a Scorpius Hexbug. <laughs> Hello, baby. <laughs> oh, you're gonna sit right there all day. And when someone turns around and goes, Oh, there's a Hexbug so yes. Here it is, the finished item, and if Hexbug ever did make a Scorpius, this is pretty much it. The Sawblaze base offers a great likeness to its brother in Saw, yet comparing the two side by side, the differences are enough to separate them as two completely unique designs. The front ploy has been replicated extremely well, complete with the raised sections in the centre and incredibly sharp tips allowing zero degree ground clearance. The holes in the ploy are present as well, alongside the glossy silver crack design running along the surface, but look closely and you'll see the clues of its 3D printed origins. The centre faceplate looks excellent and I really love the red plate behind it, making the cutout designs very much stand out. As an added bonus, the sponsor logos from the actual Scorpius machine have been included across the robot, showing some great attention to detail on Chaotic Robotics' part. Be and it's got all like their official sponsors and stuff and all on it as well. The bulk of the main body is mostly unchanged, with the wheels being repaints of the existing Sawblaze model, and some 3D printed silver sections acting as the sloped armour panels at either side of the weapon arm. On the back, the rear panel has been replaced with the Two Penny Milk name to personalise it for Anthony, which is a nice little touch. If you look at the back of it, instead of Scorpius, it says Two Penny Milk. <laughs> That's good! <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I Scorpius team, that's what I want in the back. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Drop zone. <laughs> Drop zone. <laughs> the weapon arm has been given these black prongs at either side to make it look more like the Scorpius model, and ever the perfectionist, Anthony has added some further customization. Alongside repainting it to match the scheme of the real bot, he's also hot glued this plastic tube under the arm, preventing it from fully retracting like the Sawblaze version, and making the arm sit up, corresponding to how the actual Scorpius weapon arm rests. The dragon head saw has been switched out for a 3D printed T-Rex head saw to really disassociate it from the Sawblaze model and make it look distinctly more like Scorpius. It's got to be bone and all. Oh yeah. The Hexbug Breakaway Panels gimmick has also been included, allowing both sides of the scoop to be unpegged and removed, as well as the back panel, in keeping with the damage points on the Sawblaze toy. I also really like what Anthony has done here, with the stabilizing tail attached to the breakaway rear section, so it affects the performance of the toy if this panel is knocked off and makes it wheelie. All these come off? Yeah, you can pull them off. Just pop them off. He says that and I break it. As for the controls, the same setup as Sawblaze is present with a rechargeable battery port on the on-off switch at the bottom. It pairs to the usual Hexbug infrared controller where the wheels have independent control, allowing it to move forward and back, turn left and right, as well as execute a zero degree turning circle. The new disc may look more impressive, but it's still safe to touch when spinning, while the raised arm doesn't affect the movement of the weapon with it able to swing forward and back like the base model. Honestly though, like to Chaotic Robotics, just fire all the Hexbug people, like, do you be the main guy, like, look, look at this. We can finally make <laughs> it happen. Sawblaze oh. versus Scorpius in Hexbug form. Oh yes, we hyped it up on the drop zone, but a battle of this magnitude called for more celebration and ceremony. So let's get down to the Hexbug battle box and sort this thing out once and for all. This is Scorpius versus Sawblaze. The bots have been loaded into the official Hexbug Arena Max playset available now from all good retailers. Our drivers, poised and ready to go. Not a looker among them, but sure, what can you do? Robots activate. Scorpius, definitely the heavier weapon of the two machines, also has great defense with that front ply as long as it stays on. Remember, both of these machines have breakaway pieces. Sawblaze, equally low ground clearance with those front forks, but it can rock itself backward whenever driving forward, which could give Scorpius the opening it needs. Slash and burn! Let's go! Of legends, a pair of titans, a pair of saw bays, but only one can be the winner. Here we go. Let the bot battle begin, and already Sawblaze is in underneath Scorpius, flipping it up backward, but Sawblaze is causing catastrophic damage to itself and its own forks, bent upward, giving Scorpius the advantage here, but Scorpius has just lost one of the parts of its own front plow there, it still managed to retain the second half of it, Sawblaze is on the retreat trying to come in for an attack, but no, Scorpius, it's still using that one half of the plow to great effect here against those bent and now useless forks of Sawblaze, which are so pivotal in getting that hammer saw to attack its opponents. It's not going to get a chance to in this fight and Scorpius is taking all the advantage in the world here, but no, it's starting to lose the second half of its ploy. Scorpius flipping Sawblaze onto its back, but there it goes, the other half of the ploy of Scorpius now gone. They can't get underneath Sawblaze at this point and Sawblaze with the twisted forks can try and use them to push against that flat front of Scorpius but Scorpius having none of it they've now bullied and pushed Sawblaze into that bottom corner and landed a few successful attacks perhaps now backing away to come in for a big ram but no that's Sawblaze's job now trying to get those forks deep underneath the machine but they won't be able to do it not bent up like that Sawblaze desperately trying here they're on the back foot in this fight almost bullied again into that corner of the battle box but now Scorpius are they in trouble no they're not for a moment there I thought they'd got their saw stuck on the edge of the battle box Sawblaze digging those forks into everything it seems except for its opponent who waits for it patiently in the center of the arena dancing some sort of evil dance but now Scorpius has got Sawblaze pegged once more and lands a few more attacks much to the enjoyment of its driver but Sawblaze stuck now 
in that corner and a big hit there from that Scorpius weapon is now seeing Sawbly is being pushed toward the screws and if they get caught there no 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 just away and Scorpius looks a little bit dazed and confused as a result there that's opened them up to a huge attack here from Sawblaze who are desperately trying to cling on to some points here and a great ram and charge here yeah, that has pushed Scorpius into the corner of the battle box they've got them up and close to those screws and out of the box goes Scorpius Sawblaze the winner <laughs> Sawbly has won the ground game initially in under Scorpius, but check this out, bending their own fork, slamming against the wall. Scorpius, they lost the side of their own wedge very early on. That didn't impede them though, and definitely gave them the upper hand through the majority of this fight until they rammed into the wall, lost the other half. That didn't seem to affect the performance of their weapon, unlike Sawblaze, who definitely did have trouble with those forks, and that back panel as well as you saw there, but what a spectacular comeback. Using those mangled forks to ram Scorpius into the screws and how about that maneuver bringing the hammer saw over using it as a clamp and pushing Scorpius up over the screws over the wall and out of the box saw blaze proving that no matter how good the customs may be the real deal is always the winner well I, I was winning I was winning I was pretty dominant in that fight uh, until the end but that's robot combat for you but honestly over the moon with the performance of Scorpius I love the B panels and Chaotic Robotics has done an absolute belter of a job here with the panels at the front and the T-Rex blade of death. But I absolutely adore the Scorpius team. I love Diana and Zach and getting to know them over the years has been absolutely amazing. And to have a miniature version of the robot, is, oh, it's just absolutely amazing. I will say one thing, I do hope that one day Hexbo will make a Scorpius uh, replica but a pack, um, a rival's pack. Um, I don't care who else is in the or in the pack, but as long as we have the Scorpius. But until then, I have this absolute gem, and thank you so much, Kev Robotics, and thank you so much to the Scorpius team. And uh, I will do you proud next time. I will do you proud. And so that brings us to the end of this video. What did you think of the custom Hexbug Scorpius? And what other battle bots would you like to see Hexbug create? Let us know in the comments section down below. And until next time, for Chaotic Robotics, for Anthony Murney, I've been Stephen McCullough. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.